afternoon. Welcome to Eastman's Engineering and uh, welcome today to a computer science principles uh, final exam review that I uh, use for my students and I'm putting this up onto the channel so I can help any of you that are preparing for the computer science principles exam to uh, get a little more exposure to some of the questions that you might see um, on here. Now this particular game obviously is meant to be played as a class. It's meant to be played in a um, uh, in an environment where you know there's a competitive environment going on, uh, what I usually do is I usually have responders <coughs> uh, submit answers to a Google form and give the top five answers, the top five uh, people that come in first with the correct answers, uh, double the points, and then give everyone else a standard amount of points, and then I have them keep their own scores and honor system. And but it's obviously the purpose of this is to give a comprehensive review of the kinds of questions that you will see on the final exam. So what I'll do is uh, I have a grand total of 30 questions per category, um, per board, excuse me, so I have a total of 60 questions plus a final Jeopardy question. Uh, and if you want to play along like that, you can certainly do that. So I'm just going to go item by item, uh, we'll dollar value all the way down from the 100 to 500 and kind of go through these questions and, and take a look at it. So um, this has a value assigned once and won't change. So this category is variable roles. So what variable role fits that role, that particular description? Uh, the answer is a fixed or constant value, fixed or constant value. Um, the next question on the list here is when serving this role, the variable will add to the value often keeping a running total. We call that an accumulator, uh, accumulator uh, variable role. Next question, uh, a variable in this role will collect things into a list or similar structure. We call that an aggregator, an aggregator uh, variable role. Next question, this might signal it's time to move on or maybe someone has captured it. We call that a one-way flag and uh, that variable role. Last one, instead of just replacing the existing value, this variable will check to see if it is an improvement before storing the value. We call that the best so far. Uh, variable roles. So that whole entire category was just about variable roles. Um, and, uh, you know, there's really only eight answers to that. And oftentimes you'll have to analyze programs to get uh, that information uh, about whether or not what kind of role something is fitting uh, primarily. And uh, you'll usually have, have some choices. Um, again, all the questions on the exam are multiple choice. In this case, you know, open ended responses are coming from these questions. Now, data. There are only, well, I usually have to read this out loud, but I usually, I, I usually try not to read it out loud just because it's, you know, one of those jokes. Uh, one zero type of people in the world, those who understand it, those who don't, the answer, of course, is binary. Binary, $100 question there. Um, binary math will limit this amount of data to a maximum of 255. So uh, we talk a lot about this particular concept about computer file sizes. Uh, we're talking about 255 um, being one byte. And of course, you also can consider it to be eight bits. Uh, after all, bits is short for binary digits, right? So, next question. The American standard for, sorry, for the typo, information interchange stores characters with one byte each. Uh, we're talking about the ASCII or ASCII um, uh, interface. Probably won't see a question like that, but you know, it's good to know that, that it exists. Uh, next one, hex requires 16 characters starting at zero and going to what letter? And the answer is F, letter F. Not for failure, of course, always for fantastic. All right, the main purpose is to reduce file size, but sometimes fidelity is sacrificed if it is lossy. We're talking about file compression or just compression. And the last question in this category, uh, sorry, this is the next category. We'll go back to this for a second. Uh, that was the last question in the category. Okay, next category here is creating code. We're going to see some uh, potential code-related questions in this one. Uh, and if then block and scratch is an example of this type of expression. It checks to see if something is true before proceeding. We're talking about, of course, a Boolean expression. Next question. In Python, this starts a function definition. The way you have to start a function is the DEF line. You would define the function and then put the name of the function, and then your arguments would be in parentheses. If there are no arguments, you do a set of parentheses, empty set of parentheses, and of course include a colon at the end. Uh, these are needed after the name of a function in order to execute it. Sorry, I just gave away the next question. Uh, you would need some parentheses, and of course, you would also need a colon afterward. Next question. In Python, this will concatenate a string or add numbers. We're looking at, of course, at the plus sign. Concatenation means combines two strings into one string, of course. And the last question in this category, for n in range of 5, the third time through, n is going to be what value? This is, uh, the value is 2, says it starts counting at 0. So that's going to be uh, the value there. All right, next question, software design category. Uh, finding errors in a program and fixing them before they become a real pest. We're talking, of course, about debugging. 
Uh, this shows the status of a program and where it can go next. We are talking about a flow diagram or a state diagram or a flow chart. In contrast to waterfall design, this process provides for frequent testing and a shorter development cycle. We're talking about the agile design process. Frequent client input is also a characteristic of agile design. Lots of feedback loops in this, in this uh, process. Next question. A checkpoint in development usually saved uh, using Git. We're talking about a commit in this case. GitHub was actually really nice to us this year. <laughs> uh, either data or procedural, it allows us to ignore details in order to reduce complexity. We're talking about abstraction here. We don't necessarily have to know how all things work. We just have to know that it works in some cases. All right, in this digital, I'm sorry, this is the next category. That was the last question in software design. Now, next category is digital colors. In this digital representation of color, each component has 256, 256 possible values. We're talking about the RGB stand, uh, uh, standard here. Next question, in an RGBA image, this determines opacity or transparency. That would be the alpha channel, the A in the RGBA. This would give you the red value of the 20th pixel in the 10th row of a picture array called IMG. This uses a double bracket on here, and it's the red value. So it would be the uh, it would be this line here. This is the uh, sorry the 10th row. We'll go back to the question in just a second here. Go back to the question just to show you 20th pixel 10th row of a picture array called image. So it's the 10th row, 20th pixel, and then the first value is R. If we were looking for the G value, it would be one. If we were looking for the B value, it would be two. So uh, we, we kind of use this uh, formatting in the uh, activities one, uh, one four, um, when you were doing image rendering and looking for particular values and editing of pixels. You'd have to use that format to do it. Uh, use when pacing with pill determines what is made transparent in the new image. That is called a mask. You would you, uh, you use that when you made that custom mask back in uh, assignment one four four, I want to say. And uh, last question is, is it, if this is true, you have what's called a shade of gray. Uh, if this is true, and this is kind of an open for interpretation here, if you have an R and a G and a B that are equal to each other, you have a shade of gray. So there you have it. Okay, that's that category. Last category in the single um, standard Jeopardy board, data manipulation and object-oriented programming. That's what OOP stands for. Uh, it returns the fourth element in a list called items. You would call items bracket three to get the fourth item in that list. Um, what would you get if you uh, typed in range of three in IPython? What would you get out of it? You would get a list of zero, one, and two, and it would come out as a list. Mm. The len of image zero is a way to find this in an ND array image object. The answer is what is the length of the first row, which, which also would be the same as the width of the image. All right, next question. This consists of class names, attributes names, and methods names. Uh, we're talking about a UML diagram um, in this case. Next question. When this is done to a class, an object is created. Uh, the correct ver uh, word to describe that is instantiate. The object will have the methods and attributes designated in the class. All right, and that's that board. Now, let's. I have another board to go through as well. Uh, this. Uh, these categories are more for the second half of the course, units three and four, although we do have a little bit of GUIs uh, in here as well from, uh, from unit one five. Uh, so let's go ahead and go through those questions right now. Uh, what is the acronym GUI? That stands for Graphical User Interface. Next question. Uh, an event might be someone clicking a mouse. This part of a program will decide what to do in response. The correct answer here is an event handler. Also uh, would be you know covered in the HCI principles, human computer interaction. Uh, the field of computer science that focuses on how people and machines communicate. That of course just answered the next question, which is HCI, human computer interaction. Interactions that rely on the sense of touch. That's a great vocab word. It's called haptics. And last question in this category: a pattern that separates a program into the data, the observer, and the controller. That is the MVC pattern. All right, so that's that category. Next question, we have images in Python. Uh, if you have this line on here, this keyword brings the resource into your, co into your code so you can use it. So which word in this line? The answer is the import part. Next question, this is the short name given to the matplotlib. There's another typo, sorry, pyplot module. 
Uh, the short name is PLT, typically, in most of the activities that you utilize mat, uh, matplotlib in. Uh, same line again. This is the name of the library that's being imported. Imported, excuse me. You are imported matplotlib. Next question. This is the module that we want to use. We want to use the pyplot module. And for the ND array object IMG, the len of IMG would give you this. Uh, that actually is a question that we have uh, elsewhere in there as well. It's the height of the image. It's uh, give you the number of roads, which will also be the height on here. OK. Um, looking back at this, and I believe this is a typo as well. Number of rows, which is the width. Sorry, number of rows, which is the width. My fault, another typo. It should be the width of the image. Width of the image. I have a very good mind to just edit that right now. <laughs> All right, uh, next category. Data types in Python is the next category. This data type consists of whole numbers and their opposites. That is an integer or int. Next question. This type of data will always have a decimal point. That is a float. Next question. True or false, nothing else, that is a boolean. Next question. Most of the time it is text, but it really can be any characters. That, of course, is a string. And lastly, similar in form to a list, but it is immutable. That is a tuple. Tuples cannot have their members reassigned. All right, so that's category uh, data types in Python. Three more to go. Now we're on the web. Provides a human-friendly address for internet destinations. We're talking, of course, about the DNS, Domain Name Service. Next question. More surreptitious than sweet, these keep track of your activities online so pages can tailor your experience. That is a cookie. The .org in this website is a top-level domain. Next question. Verbosely, the World Wide Web Consortium, it develops web standards. That is the W3C. And last question in this category. SIN 6, Act 7, 734, Act 35. That is a TCP handshake. Thousand point question, of course, right? All right, now more web. The proper way to close the body of HTML, how would you do it? You would type in a open tag slash body and close tag. Next question. A tool external to web page for setting font and background color. That is a cascading style sheet for CSS. Next question. Use this to encrypt a message for someone else using public key encryption. So if the message is for somebody else, you would encrypt it using their public key so that they can decrypt it with their private key. JavaScript is a good example of this. That is a client-side scripting uh, language. And last in this category, you can combine data across several MySQL tables into one result. That is a join command. You would use that, of course, when you're querying a database. All right, last category, visualizations and simulations, stuff that you're probably in right now or finishing up with right now. Uh, any tool that uses a graph or a picture to extract meaning from data, that is a visualization, such as histograms, pie charts, bar graphs, line graphs, et cetera, et cetera. Histograms are a good way to visualize what in data? That is frequency, of course, how much of something that you have, frequency. Next question. Individuals programmed to follow rules within specific parameters. Those are turtles or agent-based simulations. We usually talk about the, that with the NetLogo program. Next question. Unprogrammed behaviors that appear suddenly. Uh, that is emergent behavior, like such as with the Vant. And the last question, both self-similar and infinite in detail, the answer is a fractal. Again, talking about the um, uh, NetLogo simulations. All right, so that clears that board. There is one more question on here that would be Final Jeopardy. Uh, there is a Final Jeopardy thing. And this, by the way, I got this from a template off of the internet. Um, I found a nice one, and I just modified it for uh, all the CSP classes, of course. And you can in here, you can type in scores and adjust scores and all that stuff as well. But obviously, now that we're in the Final Jeopardy, you can't do that. And then the last question that I would put in here is automated programs that index websites for search engines. Uh, we call those web crawlers or spiders, of course. And of course, why not a picture of Spider-Man, right?
All right, so that concludes this uh, helpful CSP, hopefully helpful CSP review. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and if you're taking the exam pretty quick, uh, pretty soon, I wish you the best of luck. I hope that your uh, scores come back positive, and I hope that you enjoyed the course. Have a wonderful day, and don't forget to be awesome.